Well, welcome to this short tutorial which is going to cover the Attribute Transfer SOP. And the Attribute Transfer SOP is one of the most powerful in Houdini and it's also a little complicated so it's worth spending a little time explaining the different ways in, it, in which it can function. In order to do this I've set up this simple scene and what I've done is started off with a line as we can see. I've deleted everything just to leave the points. I've then deleted the central point of the line, this one here, because I'm going to position something here later on. And then I've created two groups, one of which is just these two points either side of that one I've deleted. And then the second group is everything else. And then I'm creating an attribute on these points. And for the ones at the middle here, I give it a value of 1. And for all of the other points, I give it a random value between 2 and 11. So let's have a look at this. And we can see that the points here at the center have a value of 1, and these other points have a value of 4, 7, 10, and so on. Let me turn off the display of points for a second. Just as, as an aside, the way I've got Houdini to display these values is by setting up a custom display attribute here for our attribute num. So I want something to transfer attributes from and to. This is I'm going to transfer attributes from the points on this line to a single point. And rather than use a single point so that we can visualize where it is, I'm going to use a primitive sphere. And a primitive sphere in fact just has a single point at its center. So this will be a good way of visualizing the transfer of an attribute to a single point, but we'll be able to see where that point is because it will have the sphere around it. And then I've added a simple transform here. So let's lay down the attribute transfer. And it has two connections, one of which is the geometry to transfer attributes from. So in this case I'm going to put the line into here. And the other is the geometry to transfer the attributes to, which is going to be our sphere. So let me put the display flag on this. So all I've done is now add a merge to this, to the end of this network to merge back together the points of the line and uh, the sphere so that we can see them both together. And I've also made sure that I'm selecting the num attribute from this geometry to transfer to this geometry. Now we could have called this anything, I've just called it num uh, because it's easy to remember. You can select a subset of the geometry that you're going to transfer from and indeed a subset of the geometry that you're going to transfer to. At the moment we're using all of the points in this incoming line. So let's have a look at how the attribute transfer works. And the first way it works, there, is, there are really three distinct ways in which to use it. And the first way, the simplest way, is when we have this parameter here, max sample count set to 1. And with max sample count set to 1, what it does is it finds the nearest point on this incoming geometry to the point we're considering, and it fetches the value of the attribute that we're interested in, in this case num, from that nearest point and transfers it to the point we're interested in. Obviously here at the moment we've got a single point coming in. If there were many points here then it would just repeat that same set of steps for every single point. So at the moment what it's doing is it's having a look for the nearest point. It's probably finding this one here or this one here and it's transferring the value of 1 and giving us a value of 1 here. Simple enough. Now this is controlled by a distance threshold here. And in fact, I've set up a sphere to visualize that distance threshold. And at the moment, uh, we can see that that is actually with a radius of 10, much bigger than all of the points on the line. So let's bring that right down. I'm going to bring it down to, say, 1 for the moment. And we can see that's still plenty big enough to incorporate these two nearest points. But if I bring it right down, so 
I make it say a radius of 0.4 we can see what's happened now is that that value of num has gone to zero and that's because it's only looking inside this maximum distance for points and it's not finding either of these points because they're more than 0.4 away from the center of this sphere. So the second way to use the attribute transfer SOP is when we have a max sample count here that's greater than 1. So let me give it a max sample count of 4. And obviously nothing has changed at the moment because the distance threshold is still 0.4, it's too small, so let's revert that back to its default. And now we can see that we're getting a value here of 3.7295. And the reason we're getting that is that it's using the nearest four points to our point. So it's taking into account this point, this point, this point, and this point. And it's using a system to average those points to get this value here. Well, how does it know how much emphasis to put on the nearer values as opposed to ones that are further away? Quite often you'll want to give more priority to points that are nearer to the point you're interested in, while still taking into account the points further away. Well, the answer is that it uses this so-called kernel function. Uh, this is by analogy with a metaball. And a metaball is a way of defining a value, a weight if you like, at every point in space based on the distance from a central point. So in this case, we're using this elent model kernel to define a weight which declines as we move away from the point that we're interested in here. And that weight is used to decide how much emphasis to give to these values here and these values here when working out the value to transfer. So it's taking a combination of all of these values, using the weighting and coming up with this value. And I've laid out something here which allows us to visualize that metaball. Let me just turn off the max distance visualization. And what this is, is a line. And we can see at the moment, because our metaball radius is so big, the value of that field, value of that weight is pretty high throughout the length of our line. So let's just reduce that kernel radius and we can see as we do that we get the line starting to look a bit more like a weight curve. So in this case we'd find if we increase the number of samples say to 20 we would find that it would take into account everything up to the values around here and after that it wouldn't be taking them into account because the value of this field would be zero. So let's uh, zoom in and see what value it's giving us. And it's giving us a value of 3.94 or so. And that's taking into account all of these points and multiplying them by the weight of this kernel function. You can choose uh, different kernel functions. To be honest, uh, they don't really make much of a difference. Uh, they just give you a slightly different profile to this curve. So the second way that you can use the attribute transfer SOP is to use multiple values for this max sample count. And that will take into account multiple points that are close to the one that you're interested in and weight them according to this kernel radius and this kernel function. And that produces a slightly more sophisticated, subtle way of deriving a value for your attribute here. So to illustrate the final use of an attribute transfer SOP, I've got a slightly different setup. I've got a single point, which I've positioned in an X position of three. It's this point over here. And I'm giving it an attribute called num, and I've chosen a value of five. We could choose anything we like. And the rest of the setup is the same as before, except that on this, in this case, I'm setting my distance threshold to zero. And instead, I've increased this value of blend width. And I've now got this curve here visualizing 
the extent of the blend width. And what blend width does, uh, as we'll see in a second, is to take the value of the nearby point and reduce it according to the value of the weight of this function with this radius here. So in this case, we're getting a value of zero uh, because as we can see, this curve uh, declines to zero. Let's increase this a little bit so that we're getting a little value. And now we can see this has got a little tiny bit of a value here, uh, but this has gone up to a value of five. So why is that happening? Well, in order to use this version of attribute transfer properly, we need to set up a value of attribute of the attribute num on this incoming geometry before it gets to the attribute transfer. So let me lay down an attribute create and I'm going to give it a value, an attribute called num, and we're going to give it a value of zero. And we can see now, uh, not very clearly, but we can see that this now has a value of 0 0.35 or something like that, 0.95 perhaps. So what's happening here is that this value is being transferred, but it's being multiplied by the value of this field here. And the value of that field is controlled by this radius. So as I increase this radius, we can see that this value increases. Now, in fact, it's not just being multiplied. What's happening is it's blending between the incoming value, which happens to be zero, and the value that might be transferred here. And it's blending between the two of those according to the weight of this function at that point. So in other words, the amount, trans amount of this attribute that's transferred depends on how far away the point is from the point we're interested in. And we can control the effect of that using the blend width. And it's called blend because we're blending between these two values. So if I was to make this, uh, for example, a value of 2, then we can see we get a different value here because it's blending between a value of 2 and a value of 5 according to how, uh, how intense this field is here. So that allows you to transfer values from points and the value transferred decays further the further away you are from the point and that's often quite a useful thing to be able to do. So those are the three different ways in which you can use an attribute transfer SOP.